12. And while you're standing uh, in honor of the reading of God's Word, I just want to say that I'm thankful to be in God's house with God's people today. Uh, well, anytime, but uh, you know, you ever been somewhere where you just didn't feel like you belonged, you didn't fit there, that's not where you sh should be, and uh, um, I, that's not the house of the Lord. It's just family, and I'm thankful for the church family, and I'm thankful to be here uh, among family. Ephesians chapter 6, just one verse, verse number 12, and then we're going to turn over to Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, take our text from Hebrews chapter 12. But I want to read Hebrews chapter, or Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 first. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, turn, if you would, over to Hebrews chapter 12, and we'll read the first four verses of Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For considered, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. In both places we see that there's a battle, there's a fight, there's a struggle, there's striving. In one place it talks about uh, principalities and powers, rulers. In this place it talks about sin. And so there is a, a fight, a struggle, a contest, and, um, and the, it's not a physical contest. We're not riding, uh, running in a physical race. We're not wrestling in a physical match, wrestling match. It is uh, a spiritual one. And I want to encourage you tonight. I want to preach the Word of God and, and preach on this. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Father in heaven, we pray you bless Help us to uh, encourage, give courage uh, to those that are here to help us to keep fighting, keep striving, keep struggling uh, um, in, in the spiritual battles, battles, Lord, I pray. We ask in Jesus' name for his sake. I pray you fill me with your spirit, fill each here with your spirit. Lord, I ask and desperately ask for your power from your Holy Spirit. I pray in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. The word striving here in our passage, verse number four, you have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. The word striving, the word wrestling in Ephesians chapter six, verse number 12, gives the connotation that we're in a battle, we're in a fight. In fact, Ephesians chapter six tells us how to prepare for that fight, for that wrestling fight. The word fight gives so many different connotations. It's interesting as we look at scripture and and then we look at words throughout uh, that we would use on a regular basis. There's some words that we use that we could use in a myriad of connotations. Think about the word fight. Uh, we can fight cancer. We can fight corruption. We can fight climate change. We can fight communism. We can fight crime. Those are all things we can fight. And they're all different types of fights. They're completely different. Uh, uh, we can fight a cold, we can fight a craving, we can fight a claim, we can fight a cause, we can fight a clog. How many's ever fought a clog? The house we lived in in Texas, uh, uh, there was a lot of live oak trees around our neighborhood and uh, the, the, the oak trees, the, the roots were, were terrible. And so uh, every once in a while, uh, we had a clean out in our garage and, and every once in a while uh, we'd step out in our garage and our garage would just be uh, uh, flooded with whatever went down the garbage disposal or went down the washing machine and, and it was uh, out, come through the clean out and I'm telling you I kept a snake, a 50 foot snake and, and I didn't use uh, Drano, I didn't use any of the weak stuff I would just go to Home Depot and you get a bag uh, of uh, uh, basically uh, how was, what was that stuff um, do you remember the name of that stuff? Anyway it was just a, a, an acid, straight acid. And I would pour that down the drain uh, to, because nothing would touch those and get through those. It was a pain. I fought a clog many, many times. Uh, we can fight the clock. We can fight crowds. We can fight a cure. Uh, we can fight the city or the county. 
We can fight like crazy. We can fight like a champ. We can fight like cats and dogs. We can fight like a couple. Hopefully that's not the case. We can fight in a club, on a court, in a class, in, co in court, in combat. We can have a clean fight, a close fight, a corrupt fight, a quick fight, a classy fight. We can have a cat fight. And those are just the C's, unless you were sharp enough to catch one that wasn't. Did you catch it? Quick, all right, very good. The quick, that, was, that didn't start with a C. All the rest of those, that's just one letter. All the different types of fights. We have uh, all kinds of fights. Our passage this evening indicates that we are in a struggle and a battle. We're not talking about a cat fight. We're not talking about fighting a clog. We're talking about a spiritual battle that we're in. We're talking about a spiritual fight, a spiritual struggle. In both cases, both in Ephesians chapter 6 and Hebrews chapter 12, and throughout a, a number of passages in Scripture, we find the necessity to keep fighting. Again, it's not a physical fight against flesh and blood. I'm not talking about going and, and uh, uh, putting on the gloves and getting in a ring. It's a fight or a struggle against sin, against spiritual uh, uh, powers. We fight against doubt. So that's not sin, is it? Uh, well, a lack of faith is sin, so doubt would be a sin. Doubting God is sin. That's a spiritual fight that you and I will, will battle. And when we think of, uh, of fighting sin, sometimes we think of, uh, of some kind of immoral sin or something on the outward, but we fight against spiritual things inside. Doubt. We fight against doubt. We fight against fear. We fight against lust, imaginations, pride. Oh, I can't tell you Maybe you don't struggle with this. I can't tell you the struggle that I have with pride. Oh, how I fight. Oh, how I uh, battle. I strive against pride, spiritually speaking. Disobedience. These enemies are all enemies that we will, uh, uh, that we will only defeat in the end of life. When we pass over to the other side, there's no longer a struggle. We pass to eternity. I think about what Paul told Timothy, what the Holy Spirit used Paul to tell Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4. I have fought a good fight. Now, that's past tense. I fought it. My fight's over. Why did he say it was over? Because he's at the end of his life. There's no more fights to fight. He was about ready to die. And what I'm trying to tell you is we're going to continue to fight until that day. That's why in 1 Timothy chapter 6, the Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, tells Timothy to fight a good fight. So he's telling the young man, hey, you need to fight, while he's telling him in the second epistle to Timothy, at the end of his life, I have fought my fight. I have fought a good fight. And so that fight, uh, let me get, be a real uh, big encouragement to you, that fight, that fighting fear, fighting doubt, fighting pride, that fight's not going to be over until your life is over. That fight's going to continue. This, excuse me, this type of fight is like a contest or a race, as we see in Hebrews chapter 12, that the enemy really never goes away. And I tell you, the principalities, the powers, the, uh, uh, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places, those, those uh, don't go away. Uh, we fight them. How many times have you fought something and you feel like you got victory and then just a few weeks later, a few months later, there's that enemy again. Like I, I, I've, I feel like I've, I've fought doubt. I've fought fear. I've fought it off and I've won. And then here it comes again. A lot like a cyclical seasons of a sport, the challenges never go away they start over again after each fight. Number one, when we keep fighting, we struggle in a challenge. We struggle in a challenge. Look at verse number one. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us and let us run. And so there's a, there's a battle. There's a, 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 this is, indicates a race. And, and though we're not fighting in a race, we are striving, we are fighting to win. It's just not a physical 
punching match uh, using our fists or, or feet. It's a, it's a fight. How many have ever run track? Not one person. No one ever ran track in here. Okay, never mind. We won't talk about running track. How many have ever run in a race at all? Maybe against your brother or your sister or somebody. Okay, all right. We were at the park the other day. Um, I think it was Labor Day. Might have been, was it Labor Day morning? We were at the park and uh, we saw a husband and wife. I assume it was husband and wife because the kids were there uh, uh, racing in the park. Uh, they were running out to a, uh, uh, a light pole and they touched the light pole. And we, were, we were driving by. Of course, you're, we're in the parks. So we're driving slowly and, and they're running out and they came back and she beat him. And so we were, like, kids and I were laughing. Their kids were, were uh, sitting there. They were having some kind of picnic or something. Anyway, they were, they were racing. They were running. That's a fight. It's not the same type of fight, but it's a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle and a challenge. So when we're fighting, if we say, all right, I want to keep fighting, there is a, a challenge that we're struggling in. It's not something that is easy. If you've ever run long distance, especially, you understand uh, you get through a certain point where uh, um, as you're running, you get to a place where you, you, you want to quit, you want to stop, you want to give up. And there's a struggle, there's a battle internally, and, and, and there's a wall there that if you push through, you have, it's almost as if you're walking out on a beach Anybody's ever been to a beach where uh, the waves are coming and you go out and it comes down and you know, you're up to your neck and then you keep on going and there's another sandbar out there and you come out a little bit higher. There's a, a, a when you're racing and you're running, it's, uh, uh, there's a, a point in your flesh, there's a point in your body where you say, I can't do this anymore and you push through that and there's an, a, a burst of energy or a certain amount of energy beyond that. And that's a struggle, a physical struggle. There's a struggle and a challenge, a challenge of frequency. Now, when we think about a race, now most races in the Bible times were races that were from point A to point B. But when we think about uh, uh, races of today, uh, most of them, many of them are in a, on a track. And as I mentioned earlier, it's very cyclical. We see some of the same things. It's, a, it's a, uh, something that we're fighting that, as you mentioned, you alluded to in your testimony, something that comes up on a regular basis and, and, and we have to keep fighting against it. We have to keep, str the struggle is, uh, uh, it keeps on coming back. As if we're running in a race and, and, and we're in a circle and, and, and we're running and here's that place again, here's that struggle again, here it comes again, it comes up frequently. And, and we see that uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31 says, I protest. By your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. He said, I have to fight this every day. It comes up. This is not just something that, that I struggle with uh, um, for a little bit while. It's every day I fight this battle. Every, I have to die daily. So it's a struggle of frequency. It's a, a challenge of frequency. It's a challenge of fortitude. Look, it... it Excuse me, let us run the race with patience. That word patience doesn't indicate where we're just sitting and waiting on someone. Did I do that right? Um, we're just sitting and waiting on someone. No, it's uh, talking about pushing through a challenge. And so uh, there's, there's uh, um, a certain amount of a, a struggle. It takes fortitude. James 1.12 said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. We see it's a challenge of frequency, a challenge of fortitude, where uh, uh, it gets difficult. Why do you think it says to lay aside every weight and the sin that which does so easily beset us? What are we doing with the weights anyway? Well, those weights are preparing us. Sin isn't, but those weights prepare us for a fight. And we have to set those down, make us stronger so that uh, we, we, we pick those up to make us stronger so that, but we have to set them down so we can win the fight. It takes a challenge of fortitude, a challenge of uh, frequency, a challenge of fortitude, a challenge of focus. Look at verse number two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the Father, uh, throne of God. Now we think about Timothy, I'm sorry, uh, the Apostle Paul. He said, I have, finished my, uh, I've, I have uh, fought a good fight, I have finished my course. Did Timothy 
sorry, Paul. Did the Apostle Paul succeed in every fight that he fought? Did he ever lose a battle? Did he ever trip during his race? The, the, the Apostle Paul is not the one we focus on. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one that was perfect in his race. He is our focus. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and as it says in chapter, in verse number one, talking about laying aside weights and sins that does so easily beset us and run with patience, it says that Jesus Christ endured the cross. Uh, he fought, uh, he ran a race, and he finished his race, went through the finish line, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and now he's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. He finished his race. He is the one that we focus on. He is the one that we look to and say, hey, that's our example. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. So when we get weary, and we want to faint in our minds, not physically, but in our minds, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds, who do we focus on? Who do we look to? We look to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our focus. And so it's a challenge of frequency, a challenge of fortitude, a challenge of focus. When we keep fighting, we must subdue our cravings. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with, uh, compassed about, or compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin, which doth so easily beset us. Take your Bibles, turn over to First Corinthians. We'll we'll look at several different verses tonight. First Corinthians chapter nine, verses. Uh, Verse 25, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now what's that mean? Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Have you ever watched any documentaries or watched anything about fighters or read about boxers? And how they prepare for a fight? As they approach the fight, they're sitting around in the easy, in the, the Barca lounger, drinking whole milk and eating Oreos all day, right? No, they're trying to cut weight. They're trying to prepare. They're, they're running, and they're watching what they eat. And, and often, for big fighters and big fights, they will have a camp that they'll go to, and they'll isolate themselves. And they'll have their trainers and they'll have their dietitian and, and, and the people that are there with them. And, and they, will, they will separate themselves from, from family and they'll separate themselves from everyone else because there's a big fight. And there's, uh, in most cases for those big fights, there's, there's, a big, there's a lot of money on the line. And so they prepare themselves and they are temperate. They don't eat certain things. They don't do certain things. They, they, they keep themselves from certain, certain things. But that's a, a, a uh, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. They're doing this to, to, to have a, a belt that they can put on or, or, or some kind of the crown that they're referring to in, in Scripture uh, in, in regard to the, the, uh, the Greek games. They would have a, uh, um, a, a, a um, little um, crown of leaves that they would put on their head. And that would be as if what we would have a gold medal or a silver medal or a bronze medal. They would put that on the winner of a wrestling match or a fighting, uh, a fighting match or a race. They would crown the winner. Now you think about that, gold will tarnish eventually. Silver will tarnish eventually. But think about the crown that they were putting on, a crown of leaves. How many have it? Well, I won't ask because very few were even, nobody even ran track, so I don't even want to ask this question. How many have a trophy from high school or school at some place or a plaque that they won? Don't raise your hands. I thought I saw your hand going up. I'm just giving you a hard time. You can raise your hand if you want to, but how many have a trophy or a plaque at home? And you look back and you say, oh yeah, I won a race or I won this <laughs> when I was in 10th grade or 11th grade or in college. You ever thought, 
What am I doing with that thing? Why do I keep it around? What, what we even put it on the, on the fireplace mantle that I won a race in 10th grade? <laughs> I won something in 10th grade. So we think about those things that they've lasted for 20 years or however, but think about those crowns of leaves. I mean, they were, they're gone in a week. They were gone in two weeks. It was an incorruptible crown. I'm sorry, it was a corruptible crown. We we're striving for an incorruptible. It's a corruptible crown. It's just going to wither and fade away in a matter of weeks. It's going to be gone. That's what he's saying here. He's not talking about gold or silver. He's talking about literally a, a crown uh, 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 that you'd put on someone's head that made of leaves that just rot and fall away. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body, I keep under my body uh, 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 and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We must subdue our cravings. We must live temperate. Say, Pastor, why do we preach against sin? Why do we preach against the flesh? Because when we allow it to run rampant, it prevents us from being successful in fighting against uh, other sins, against sins. It prevents us from striving to please the Lord and, and live for Him. The, the sins weigh us down. So he says, hey, even, even, even worldly runners, even those that run in races or, or fight in fights, they live temperate and they do it for a, a corruptible crown. Why can't we live a, a temperate life when we're striving for an incorruptible crown? If you're fighting, we ought to subdue our cravings. When we're fighting, we strive for a crown. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, we do it for a, an incorruptible crown. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 8 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Can I say that it will be worth it? Uh, uh, I, I heard uh, Brother, uh, Brother Hiles say one time, uh, he, that this song, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life trials will seem so small when we see Christ. I, I, I heard uh, Brother Hiles one time when I was younger, I was a teenager, I remember him saying, I hate that song. And I thought, that's a good song, I like that song. And then he started singing it like this, it will be worth it all. When we see Jesus, like we're going through, it's so terrible and our struggle is so bad. And rather than having, like uh, Brother Newhouse was saying, joy of the Lord. And I, you know, I don't have anything against the song. I just remember him saying that. But can I tell you that we are striving for a crown and all the, the struggles that we're going through right now, they'll seem but uh, just, uh, uh, um, just a small... Uh, uh, um, pain at the time. When we are crowned in heaven, when we stand before the throne of God and, and we, he says, well done thou good and faithful servant. You know, I, I remember one time I was thinking about that, that phrase, well done thou good and faithful servant. We like to think that all these other things are important, a fruitful servant. Or, or uh, some kind of someone who's flashy and who has a lot of talent. But God desires for us to be, Brother Gates, faithful. That's what he desires from us. One day, if we'll finish our race, we'll stand in front of him and receive a crown of righteousness. We strive for that crown. Not a, not a corruptible crown, but an incorruptible. So we can go back to our mansion and we can put it on the, the, the fireplace mantle, right? No, 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 no. So we have something that we can cast at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, I think there will be many people who will desire, who will be standing empty-handed, desiring to cast something, desiring to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. And because they wasted time here, they will not have something to cast at the feet of Jesus Christ. 
We must keep striving. We must keep fighting for a crown. And then number four, and we'll be done. When we keep fighting, we submit to Christ. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 3. Remember what it said, we're looking towards Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, we're looking to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 8 says, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers, when your fathers tempted me, provoked me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said they do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. And I am continue reading. I think I have the wrong passage written down. Um, let's let's look at Hebrews chapter twelve. Go back to Hebrews chapter twelve. I'm, I'm not sure why Hebrews chapter three is on my passage or on my notes. The point is, when we keep fighting, we're submitting to Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3 is much, must be what I should have. Uh, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. And what we're doing is we're submitting to Christ. We're looking to him and saying, he is our example. He is the one that, that we're following and we're submitting to him as we follow him. As we uh, uh, look to him and say, you are our leader. You are the one that we look to for an example. We see in Luke chapter 22, if we're going to submit to Christ, to stop and pray. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, to seek God's promises. When we keep fighting, we are submitting to Christ. We are obeying him. We are looking toward him. I've used this illustration many times. I, I, I think I've used it here before. It's one of my favorite, but how many has ever heard of Jim Peters? Jim Peters, my wife raised her hand for you. She's heard me preach, use this illustration probably a dozen times. It's one of my favorite stories. Jim Peters was, uh, lived in the, the 40s and the 50s, was a marathon runner. Uh, he actually, if you go back and in and read about Jim Peters, he kind of revolutionized marathon running at the time. He uh, dropped the world record uh, by multiple minutes several times. Uh, he, the world record for the marathon, he would just, uh, uh, people would, would go slow and, and he would push and race and run and run and run hard. 1954, then the Vancouver Games, you can look this up. This is uh, um, all on the internet. This is all um, proven history. In fact, there's videos of Jim Peters. I don't think of um, 1954, the Vancouver Games, but uh, uh, the, the marathon began. The, the, the gun was shot off. The people in the marathon ran around like they would normally do, run around the track one time, and they exit uh, the Coliseum. And, of course, the marathon goes on for two hours, at that time even longer than what it would now. And so the, 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 the marathon runners ran around the track one time and then out the Coliseum, and then they continued to go um, through the other, uh, the other events. After uh, about two hours and about 20 minutes ahead of the second place person, Jim Peters came into the Coliseum. They weren't even really ready for him and people began to realize what was happening. He was literally 20 minutes ahead of the second place person. He was, had just pushed and pushed and pushed. And he ran around the track. The, the, he was supposed to run around the track one time and get to the finish line. And as he was running, people were realizing what was going on. The, the crowds began to stand and began to cheer. And they realized that Jim Peters was about to break the, the world record by a significant amount of time. And as they, he ran, that he had not drank any water at all. Now, marathon runners now, well, you'll see them, they don't slow down, but they'll grab water and they'll drink. He had not been drinking water. It was a hot day in Vancouver, a humid day in Vancouver, and he had not drank any water. And so as he ran around the track, he fell. Well, that certainly garnered the attention of the audience and of the crowd, and they began to cheer him on, and he got up, and, and he began to run again and, and, and uh, uh, stumble along, and, and he fell again. The crowd began to to encourage him on, began to cheer him on, and so he got up again and he ran. And he fell several times, 
But he kept on getting up and he kept on going and finally he crossed a little white line and collapsed. But the white line that he crossed was not the finish line. He thought it was the finish line. It was about 20 yards short of the finish line. He never finished the race. He thought he'd crossed the finish line. He collapsed there and someone helped him off the track. He never finished. He didn't, not just didn't break a record, he didn't even finish the race. He never raced competitively after that race. When we, when we are fighting, if we're not focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ, I think about Timothy, and, and I appreciate people that say, uh, uh, I think about the book of Timothy and, and the Apostle Paul will say, uh, Paul wrote this. Well, Paul didn't, Paul wrote it, but Paul was not the author of it. The Holy Spirit is the author. We have to make sure we focus, keep our focus on him. Consider him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who endured such contradiction of sinners. We must keep our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. We must keep our focus on Him because what will happen when we start focusing on others, to compare ourselves among ourselves is not wise. We start looking at others' problems, say that their problems are not as bad as my problems. I have too much to go through. We ought to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, but I have this struggle, Pastor. Keep focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep fighting and keeping uh, your, your attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. We fail when our attention turns from the Lord Jesus Christ, turns from this book, turns from Him, and becomes on our own problems. The Apostle Peter walked on the water while his focus was on the Lord Jesus Christ. But as soon as he turned and his attention went elsewhere, he went under. And the problems get big. Listen, the problems get challenging. But we must keep fighting to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And our focus is on Him. Uh, uh, he gives us the victory. We focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us the victory. When we keep fighting, we're struggling in a challenge. When we keep fighting, we, are, we must subdue our cravings. When we keep fighting, we strive for a crown. But when we keep fighting, we must submit to Christ. Our God in heaven, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ who not only came to die on the cross, but came and was a great example for us uh, to, uh, that we can consider. He endured such contradiction of sinners. And when we're struggling in a battle, when we're fighting, help us to keep our attention on Him. Help us to keep fighting, keep going, knowing that there's a crown, knowing that we're going to have to set things aside, be temperate, spend more time with you, walking with you where we heard in testimony time there's fullness of joy help us to focus on you lord we pray we ask it in jesus name we ask that you bless this invitation in jesus name we pray it heads bowed and eyes closed uh, i'm not even going to ask any questions tonight i know this morning we asked about salvation I, i'm not even going to ask any questions tonight uh, we know that there's battles we know that there's struggles I want to encourage you to keep fighting, and then I want to encourage you to keep your attention, keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take some time. Every one of us fight battles. This isn't a, a, who has a battle tonight, and raise your hand. No, everybody has a battle. Everybody's in a fight. This isn't a, a, an in, a invitation where I say, well, raise your hand if you need to keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody needs to keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take some time for each one of us to pray and ask the Lord to help us be faithful to keep fighting and keep our attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father in heaven, bless this invitation, we pray in Jesus' name. With heads bowed and eyes closed, we stand to our feet. Mrs. Dover begins to play, Brother Trot begins to sing. The altar is available. You come and use the altar as the Lord uh, leads you. If you, the Lord you spoke to your heart, you use the altor. Keep fighting. Keep your attention on the Lord Jesus faith. Christ.